So this morning we are starting with uh, a few quick lightning talks um, and uh, I'm the first one on, so let's get going. Um, there have been a couple of discussions uh, over the past few days about passwords. It always happens um, because uh, I suppose one of the major reasons people install LDAP is to validate usernames and passwords. So we always get involved in discussions of why you've got passwords, password policies, all that sort of stuff. Um, and to some extent, I suppose, why are we still using them? Uh, when I first got into this business and started learning about directories and read about Athena Kerberos uh, way back in the 1980s, um, it was pretty obvious that passwords had had their day and we weren't going to be using them in 10 years' time. Uh, that's 20 years ago. So we still use them. They're the worst possible solution, uh, apart from most of the others. Um, so we have policies to try and get around the problems. And the idea is to mitigate the risks. Unfortunately, once you set somebody to write a password policy, they start thinking security, 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 and they keep piling on the rules. And in the end, what they forget is that passwords are for use by people. And if you make life difficult for people, they fight back. And if you're trying to enforce password policy by machine, whatever you might say about AI, the people are more intelligent and more motivated to make life easy for themselves then the machine is intelligent to work out what stupid thing they've done. So be careful with your password policies. Um, if you follow the history of password policies back, I think quite a lot of them go back to the DOD Orange Book, which was a not quite classified secret document from the American government uh, in about the mid-1970s. And it gave some advice, which at the time was probably quite good, about how to construct good passwords. And we should have left that in the 1970s, because the big, the big constraint that it was working under at the time is that passwords could not be longer than six characters on most mainframes. So you had to make best use of every character which is where we get all this rubbish about one uppercase, one lowercase, one symbol, one number, um, and it mustn't represent anything, and you mustn't be able to recognize it, and you mustn't reuse it. And by the time you've added all those things together, if you think about it, you've actually banned about two-thirds of the available passwords, of the possible ones. So you're actually making matters worse in some ways. Um, these days, we don't have the same restrictions. Uh, so, I'd like to consider some alternative ideas. But before that, I'm not the only person who's done this. Lots of people have thought about this. Um, and there is some good advice out there. Um, mm, yes, well, who's going to take advice from this <laughs> lot? Uh, maybe the British government is not the place to go. Um, however, I'm still heading for a British government website. So maybe it's the civil service. One of the things Brexit has taught us is that there is a very important distinction between the government, which is Boris Johnson and his cronies, parliament, who's supposed to hold him to account and can't, um, and the civil service and the machinery of government, which is the people who actually do the work uh, and try to actually follow the rules. So yes, the civil service, they're quite good. Um, no, maybe they're a bit stuffy for this audience. Um, that's better. Right, OK. James Bond is probably Britain's strongest remaining brand. Um, he is seriously well regarded around the world. And the advice I am um, recommending to you comes from an outgrowth of one of our spy agencies. Um, this comes from the spooks, um, or at least the house-trained spooks, the pleasant ones who you can talk to, and, uh, well, in fact, even GCHQ at Cheltenham publishes their, their address these days. They are no longer a blank spot on the map. 
Um, but the National Cyber Security Center um, is staffed by intelligent people. Uh, you can go and talk to them if you want. And they've actually thought about the advice that they're giving. And they give advice on all sorts of things. It's almost all public on the web. That's their job. So there's no dual use stuff here. They're not hiding something in case they might want to use it against you. Uh, the people behind them might be, but they're not. So what I am recommending, and that QR code, if you're quick, will take you straight there, um, is you read this document. It's called Password Policy, Updating Your Approach. And these are just a few of the um, slightly surprising take-homes from that document. Um, it's too big to summarize the whole thing right now, um, but all those things you were taught, like you've got to expire passwords, you've got to have complexity rules, they're all rubbish. They don't work with people. And if you mess up the people, you mess up your security. Uh, they've got a campaign called Just Three Words. They've worked out that three really randomly chosen <laughs> words from the dictionary, all in lowercase, if you like, are a better password than almost anything with percents and acts and shrieks and all that in it. Go for length over complexity. Take out your password complexity checkers. Do put in a blacklist. Um, the top 100 popular passwords are used by something like 50% of all accounts worldwide. So if you ban the top 100 passwords, you've gone a long way to improving your password quality. It's easy to ban the top 10,000. Um, use attempt throttling. Right, now we're getting into where LDAP can help. Can we slow down the rate at which people can attack our login prompts? Um, lockout, this is where I would argue with them. They still say use lockout. Um, I would say be very, very careful with lockout. It's dangerous. Um, and where policy hits LDAP, what do you get? Do you really want to lock out your chief exec's account because somebody has, uh, well, he possibly has made a mistake a few times? Um, what effect is it going to have on your infrastructure? Every time you have a login failure, um, that becomes an LDAP right. That's not something we really like. Directories are designed to be read. And when I started in X500, the ratio was reckoned to be at least 10,000 to 1, right, uh, reads to writes. And the products were designed accordingly. Entries, of course, grow as they record password failures. Uh, that's not good. And it's terribly easy to DDoS the whole system. I could block any chosen user. So supposing I'm your competitor, and I want to stop you paying a very major bill on time. It has to be paid today, and because your finance people are typical finance people, they have delayed it until they're about to be sued, or the company wound up before they pay the bill. It must be paid this morning. Right, I can probably take down your company by just doing 10 attempts to log in as each of your finance approvers. I don't need to have any clue what their password is. I will do it very quickly. So we've got to get around that. Your own phone can DDoS you. Um, and of course, replication makes this worse. This is what made me think about it. This is one of Sean's slides from Monday. Every single password failure has to be referred back up to here, and then it re-cascades down. That is horrible. I can DDoS your entire directory infrastructure with half a dozen low-rate attempts at your login prompts. So lock out or throttle. I would rather throttle. Can we do it? Uh, how do we identify the attacks? This sort of structure we have with the distributed LDAP, not really designed for that. Maybe the client-facing code could do better. Maybe we want to move the attack detection into a separate piece of code. Um, Separate it from the LDAP servers, it has different requirements. If this thing crashes or the power goes, I don't actually care if we lose two or three minutes, half an hour of data. It doesn't matter. 
but I do want it fast and I don't want it to block anything if it gets DDoSed. So here are a few ideas. Uh, maybe we should look at how we build such a thing. So that's it. Talk to me in the break. I'm going to have to go early, but I will be here until the afternoon coffee break. Next. <laughs>